So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, before we move into the actual presentation and information for our eighth grade open house, I wanna talk a little bit about the webinar and the structure of it so that for those of you who are new to webinar, you know how this operates. Um, <clears throat> so you can see us hopefully, um, but we cannot see you. So we know that there are a number of you on here, actually a large number, so we're thrilled to see that. Um, but we don't actually see your screens or hear you. So if you're at your house or if there's things in the background or a dog barking, that is all fine. We will not hear any of that. Um, and we also won't see you. So if you're a friendly, if you're doing a friendly wave to us, we have no idea. Um, so don't be offended if we don't wave back. Um, so again, you can see us, but we and see and hear us, but we cannot see or hear you. Um, if you have questions as we go along, we're using the question and answer, the Q&A um, button and feature of webinar. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them in there. Um, one of our assistant principals, Chad Dimadustris, is monitoring the question and answer box. We will, we will go through our entire presentation and at the end of it, um, we have a, a set aside time for question, question and answer where we will try to cover as many of those questions as we can. So please feel free to use the Q&A box um, along the way and at the end of our presentation, we'll start to tackle some of those questions. We anticipate that we won't be able to get all of the questions during the time period. Um, so we will, um, we will attend to those um, following the presentation. We are recording the presentation um, so to make it available to all families. Um, once um, we have it recorded, we will send it out in an email. We'll also craft a Q&A doc for any questions we didn't get to and some of the more frequent questions so families have access to that. All right, so let's get started. So first, just a huge welcome um, to our class of 2025. So any of the eighth graders that are soon to be Lakers that are out there, we're so excited to have you here. Add extra bonus points that you are watching the eighth grade open house and double extra bonus points if your parents didn't make you do it, but you're doing it on your own accord. Um, so we're really excited to have you. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Heather Barron. I am lucky enough to be the principal of this amazing high school. This is my fifth year as principal, my, but my history with CHS goes really far back. Um, I was a science teacher here for 13 years before taking on this leadership role. Um, in addition to myself, there are a few others on our leadership team, some faces that you'll see on your screen and um, in your videos. Um, so we have Erica LeClaire, who is one of our assistant principals. Our other assistant principal is Chad DeMagistris. And we have Jean Shea, who is our Director of Student Support Services. So the purpose of the tonight, here's what we're hoping that you get out of tonight, to learn a little bit about um, education at CHS and our school's philosophy, so what we're all about, to provide um, families and students with a brief overview of the ninth grade experience, and a little taste of beyond 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, um, to meet our to meet us, just to see some friendly faces, to put some faces with names, so meet some admin and faculty. We have our whole leadership team here today. Um, and to begin the transition process for the class of 2025, this is your first official transition, um, part of the transition process to high school. Um, schedule today, the webinar will go out, just a short welcome from me. I will then pass it on to team leaders, the heads of our departments, where they will talk about courses and um, programming in their departments, in particular, what a ninth grader experiences. Um, we will then move it to school counseling and support services, and they'll talk about some of the support um, and counseling at CHS. Um, and then we'll leave a little bit of time for Q&A at the end, but hopefully through this webinar, we'll answer a lot of questions that you might have about high school. If there's one thing that we hope that you see and learn and hear through this webinar and your experience with CHS across the board, we hope that you see and feel our student-first um, philosophy. 
lots of schools talk about being students first. We live it here at CHS. It's something that we take an incredible amount of pride in. And we do this by centering our work around our school motto, which is excellence and equity in a climate of respect, responsibility, and pride, and through our core beliefs. So I won't read them to you, but we have six core beliefs as a high school that guide our work and our focus and our decision making so that we can maintain that student first lens and frame for the work uh, that we do at the high school and for our students' experience here. I want to talk a little bit about um, the high school journey and how the high school is structured. Um, so many of you may know that we often talk about greenhouse and blue house at the high school. When we say greenhouse, we refer to the ninth and 10th grade experience and Blue House to the 11th and 12th grade experience. Um, and as your student goes through 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, our goal is that by the end of 12th grade, that they've had the experiences and the opportunities to meet our school proficiencies and our graduation requirements. So here's, um, here are our graduation requirements. You can find them in lots of places. Most kids take more than this number of classes and credits. There's a lot of opportunities here. Um, but through our pathways, um, those are the graduation requirements and the credits that students will earn. In ninth grade in particular, um, it's a little bit less flexible, particularly in the greenhouse, so ninth grade and some of 10th grade, and it's a little bit more structured. So you'll hear tonight, so I won't go into too much detail, but all students will take thinkers and revolutionaries. It's a humanities course. It's a combined English and social studies class that they'll have every day all year. Um, and that's a two credit class and it's team taught. You'll hear a lot more about this. Most of your students will take either algebra or geometry. And all students will take earth system science um, and sometimes another science. A little taste of what's to come. Even though um, ninth and 10th grade tends to be a little bit more structured, there are opportunities for some interesting learning experiences and courses and other opportunities at CHS. And even more so as they go into the Blue House and they, um, their schedules open up and they have lots, of more, um, lots more opportunities to choose courses and def different pathways, what we call flexible pathways. So again, I won't read all these, but we take a lot of pride in our um, offerings and experiences that students have from really, really interesting courses like number theory, science to survival, mountain and mines, Holocaust, to some other experiences like virtual high school, our TIPS internship program, dual, en um, dual enrollment, our Laker Learning Lab and extended learning classes where there's um, robust independent studies. So lots of opportunities for students. Um, and we think it's important that students take advantage of as many of these as they'd like to, and that learning happens outside the walls of CHS, um, and that there's lots of opportunities for those flexible pathways. In addition to the academics, um, and students, listen to this, because this is really important. In addition to the academics, we also think it's critical that you're involved in something additional at CHS. Over 75% of our student population engages in some sort of athletic or co-curricular program. There's so much to do here. Take advantage of um, the depth and breadth of opportunities we have um, outside of your academic classes. You can just come here and take classes, um, but there's so much more to do and so much more to being a Laker. Um, so we encourage you to get involved um, early. And no matter what you choose to do extracurricularly, one of the things that we love about CHS are our CHS traditions. So things like Variety Night that you might have heard of, Spirit Week, where there's a lot of spirit and a lot of blue and green in this school, um, our gingerbread houses, our volleyball tournaments, home-based cahoots is a new tradition that we have started this year. So lots of things that um, join us as a whole school community no matter what grade you're in, no matter what activity you're involved in, that we all do as Lakers. I'm now going to um, pass it along to our team leaders um, and they will talk through their classes and programs. 
and I get the honor of passing it along to Wayland Cole, our humanities team leader. Wayland, you're on. Thank you. Um, excited to, to uh, be here even virtually tonight. Uh, and I'll give you a little bit of uh, some information about the humanities programming. Mrs. Barron mentioned some things already about ninth grade humanities. Um, I am representing the humanities uh, ninth grade teachers tonight. I do, do not teach ninth grade humanities this year, uh, but I've taught it several times for the last 18 years. So, uh, and I've helped write the course that's currently being taught. So I, I have a, a fair amount of knowledge about the course. Um, and can give you uh, the basics that will get you started to think, start thinking about it. Tonight. So the over um, the four year sequence that is what you're seeing right now. Uh, students in ninth grade will take humanities uh, course, which is called Thinkers and Revolutionaries. And then in 10th grade, another humanities course called the American Experience, which is a similar model. I'll get to that in a moment. And 11th uh, grade students divide into disciplines and they take English separate social studies, which is kind of what they're used to doing already in eighth grade. So um, that will be integrated in ninth and 10th grade and then divided in uh, 11th and 12th grade. Um, and uh, in 11th grade, they'll take either English, uh, general English, which is called the, the human experience English, or, or an AP English class. And in social studies, students will take uh, a social studies course called Legacies of the Past or um, an AP social studies class. Um, in 12th grade, all students will take seminar, which is um, a combined English social studies credit um, as a graduation requirement that includes civics. So that's part of our civics program. Uh, and that's just like a kind of broad overview. There are also many, many electives that students may take. And I'll get to that um, in a slide or two. Okay, so just some logistics about what the classroom looks like and what the experience looks like in ninth grade. Um, the graphic you see on the screen is what a traditional uh, social studies and English classroom setup might look like. Um, and Ms. Barron, if you just click one time, we'll see the transition. Um, and this is more of what a humanities classroom looks like. Um, since we can't have you in the space, I'm in the space right now, but we can't have you in the space, I wanted to show you a graphic that would help you to envision that. Um, this is an integrated English social studies course. So um, what that means, basically, is that there's an English teacher and a social studies teacher. They're represented by the images on the screen and they teach, they co-teach. So it's not as though one sits down and the other stands up uh, and they take turns, they teach together every day um, and they uh, co-instruct co and they co-assess. Um, and so you have the benefit of having two adults in a large classroom. There'll be about 40 kids in a double class size classroom with a collapsible wall in the middle. And the wall is mostly open. But we have the luxury of shutting that wall anytime we want to do some skills work that would be um, helpful to break the class into two and divide things up differently. Okay, um, They do meet every day for 86 minutes all year long and at the end of that year your student will receive one English credit and one social studies credit. Uh, this year and most likely next year those teachers are Beth Albright and Ben Bodwin are one teaching team, one group, one duo. They'll be teaching together and uh, Rachel Cohen and Sean McCardle are the other duo who will be teaching together. Um, and they are all, well, very experienced teaching ninth grade. If we go to the next slide, you can see, um, we call Thinkers and Revolutionaries TREV, by the way. You'll get used to that. Okay, so in TREV, um, here's some essential questions for the course. And you can see the kind of the layout of um, the year um, that we're looking at great thinkers, um, in modern world history, essentially, and um, revolutionaries who inspire great change. Um, every unit includes literary text and social studies um, uh, texts as well that are combined, that we look at together. So we're reading a literary text and then we're looking at the social studies context um, for every unit. Um, and we need to look at those things together to make the most sense out of all of it, okay? And then uh, finally, just a little look ahead uh, to 10th grade and beyond. 10th grade, the American experience is the same program model. So it's integrated, um, heterogeneously grouped, integrated English social studies course. Um, and uh, lots of the same systems and structures will exist, okay? But 10th graders can also take some electives. Um, they, they will take, they could take English and social studies courses for elective credit. Some of those classes include yearbook and journalism. Public speaking is daunting, but Wide, like wildly popular 
um, and important. Popular literature, creative writing. Uh, for social studies, I have uh, several students, 10th grade students in my advisory right now taking um, AP Gov US government. Um, philosophy, psychology, geography, lots of options. Holocaust studies is, is uh, one that was mentioned earlier. It's incredibly popular. Um, so there's lots of room for students to take something they're really interested in already, even in 10th grade. And some of those courses, like your book in journalism, are often open to ninth grade students if there's room for them. Um, and oftentimes there is in a course like your book. And that's also a great way to get involved, um, as Mrs. Barron was saying. Um, so that's, that's pretty much what, what I have to say. If you have questions, please contact and feel free. But otherwise, I'll pass the torch to Mrs. Sharkey, the math team leader. Good evening, welcome. I'm also really excited to be here, um, even though it's virtually and I don't get to see all of your wonderful faces in the audience. Um, as Mr. Cole introduced, my name is Tara Sharkey and I am the math team leader. Um, I've been teaching here for 15 years and been the team leader for I think about the last 10. So it's a, always a fun evening. And so again, hard to be here, but not see your faces. One of the things that we really strive for in the math department is we really like to have a focus on problem solving and we really emphasize modeling and problem solving and solving real world problems over memorizing and like rote, rote problems. And so hopefully some of the things that your students will experience in class are different from what some of the parents and guardians watching right now experienced when they were in high school. Um, we really want to cultivate math reasoning, want to help all learners grow and learn mathematics to the highest level that they hope to. We want everyone to think flexibly, solve in a lot of ways, and really leave CHS with a true love of mathematics. Now, that being said, in your ninth grade year, you will either take Algebra 1 or Geometry, and that depends on what you're doing currently in eighth grade. If you are currently in Algebra 1, you know that you'll, you're currently studying linear models, expanded linear models, and, and so then you would be going into geometry as a ninth grade student. Um, if you are currently in eighth grade math, then you would be a student who's coming into algebra. And the, the um, focus in both of these classes, these are differentiated classes. Um, these are classes that are just single classes. So unlike the team taught humanities classes that Mr. Cole was talking about, typically about 20 students to class. Um, but we do offer quite a few supports. So in both Algebra 1 and Geometry, we do have some sections that are co-taught with a special educator, which has been a really great way for us to create a more accessible curriculum for everyone. So really all students have the opportunity to be successful um, and also to be pushed at a high level. We really try to do that through differentiating and problem solving. You see listed below there some supports that we offer for ninth grade students. If you are a student in algebra and you're feeling kind of nervous about taking that course, we do offer a strategic algebra class that you can take alongside Algebra 1. They're taken concurrently at the same time. And in that class, you get additional support on homework, you get pre-taught and retaught skills, and a lot of students really like that, especially coming in as a ninth grader. Um, typically, a student coming into geometry in ninth grade doesn't need that additional support. That being said, as students progress through their four years at CHS, we do offer additional supports like a strategic geometry class in the future, um, a math prep is a blue house class that we have, and for all students all the time, right now it's a virtual drop-in math center, but um, hopefully in years to come we will go back to our typical in-person drop-in math center where students can go um, when they have a question and we have someone staffing that all the time. So that's kind of a glimpse into what you can expect in ninth grade. And as you progress over the four years, we want all students to demonstrate proficiency in math. What that looks like is earning three and a half credits of math, although we encourage all students to take um, more, and many, many students actually take more than three and a half credits of math. We love seeing everyone take at least one full credit of math every year. The credits have to include algebra and geometry, and we really strongly encourage everyone to go through an algebra two course and statistics. We want you to leave being a well-rounded mathematician and having that experience in both the algebra, the geometry, the statistics is really important. And one question that often comes up, especially at eighth grade open house, is what if I'm already taking algebra? And so if you're currently a student who's in algebra one, then you get the algebra requirement taken care of in middle school. However, it counts as an elective. So you still have to take three and a half credits of math here at the high school 
in school, which hopefully if you're someone taking algebra in eighth grade, you already know how great math is and you love it so much that you'll be taking even more than four, three and a half credits of math when you're here at CHS. And again, just to give you a glimpse, as Mr. Cole did, into what can come in the future, this is some other classes um, that we offer. And in addition to a traditional sequence, algebra, algebra a geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, um, we do offer many other really interesting courses like statistics. We have a math and sports class that is based in statistics as well. We offer a college algebra. Um, we have a great number theory class, a consumer math class that I think every student should take before they graduate, regardless of their life goals. And really exciting for next year as well, something to think about in the future, both our AP statistics and our college algebra classes are going to be offered for dual enrollment with different local colleges. So just kind of a glimpse into the future of a lot of things that we offer, um, both traditional and kind of more exciting and in-depth math. And so that's math in a nutshell, and I get to hand it off to Ms. Riley, who is our science team leader. Thank you, Ms. Sharkey. So great to see um, over 90 families and students represented tonight. So it's really great. Um, I'm thankful that all of you have come tonight. So I want to give you a little bit of an overview of sort of the focus of the science department here at Colchester High School. Um, we really want to create experiences that allow students to practice and hone their scientific um, skills. And so things like investigating, being able to analyze information, being able to, mod uh, to model and communicate scientifically, to engineer solutions to problems, and to make connections between science content. So regardless of what content area you might be taking, what subject in science you might be taking, we want you to be able to, to practice and hone all of these skills so that when you graduate, you're graduating as a scientifically literate student. Um, and so in ninth grade, um, every ninth grader takes earth system science. And this is, this is the class that um, uh, is a really well-developed class. Um, I've been here for 18 years and I've taught earth, earth system science for 18 years. And we have a really phen phenomenal team that has, um, at least for the last six years, has all taught this together. We have Mr. Phillips, Ms. Simons, Ms. Visser, and myself. And um, we are able to... Um, Oh, my lights are going out in my room. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me just turn the lights on real quick. All, this, all the science classrooms have these automatic light dimmers that go off at four o'clock in the afternoon. I guess it's seven o'clock also. Um, so the course is heterogeneously grouped. So um, students are, um, grouped in the entire freshman class is grouped together and we are very, very thoughtful um, about differentiating for students based on their readiness level. That can mean making accommodations or modifications. It can also mean ratcheting for students with that readiness level as well. We also have one section that is co-taught. Um, Ms. Visser and Ms. Simons have co-taught one section of Earth System Science for the last uh, three or four years together and that allows us to take the accommodations and modifications that may be made to the curriculum and for all of us to be able to incorporate those into, um, into our classes as, as we need. Okay. So what are some of the things that you're gonna be learning and doing in Earth System Science next year? So things like, you might be learning about how radioactive elements are used to date artifacts. You might be learning about how um, the greenhouse effect works and then a lot about climate change. That is such an important topic, not only um, for the world, but this is something that, that students and teenagers care so deeply about. So we spend a lot of time really giving you a strong understanding about that, the scientific basis of that, um, and really trying to focus on solutions too. What are the solutions to that as well? So the things that you'll do in this class are really going to be a lot of hands-on labs and activities, a lot of collaboration. And you can see the items that are in blue relate to the proficiencies that um, you'll, you'll be working with too and, and um, honing and practicing, like engineering, analyzing data, connecting what you're learning um, to current events, creating models, um, improving your scientific investigation skills and your communication skills. Or system science is a one credit course. It's a required course that you'll be taking for freshman year, okay? So some students who come to CHS also um, may take an additional science class their freshman year. 
And there are three courses that you could consider taking. Um, there might be uh, some of you might come in to uh, CHS also choosing to take a full year biology course your freshman year. Typically biology is a sophomore level course and there are some students who might have the readiness to take on the additional level of challenge and the rigor of the faster paced um, rigorous experimental biology course. And um, what you would be recommended by your eighth grade science teacher for that and we would also want you to have already taken algebra and be moving into geometry. Not because you need geometry for the course, but because what we find later on is if you aren't, if your math isn't advanced when you're, when you're taking advanced science courses, you may be limiting some of your options as you move forward. Your math may not be where it needs to be by the time you want to take a particular science course. So if you're going to accelerate your freshman year and taking two full year science courses, um, we want to make sure that you're um, ad advanced in your math as well. Um, we also offer two really um, interesting and popular um, cor elective courses. Um, one is called Science of Survival, and it is open only to freshmen and sophomores. So if this is a class that sounds interesting to you, um, you're definitely going to want to think about trying to sign up for that and taking that your freshman and sophomore year, because that's the, the only years it, it's available to you. Uh, we spend a lot of time outside. This is taught by Mr. Mr. Scheich, typically. Um, we, he spends a lot of time outside with you, sort of learning how do you build fire? How do you build a shelter? Can you locate edible plants and identify poisonous plants that you don't want to sort of eat? Um, how can you source clean water and survive in the wilderness? Um, that's a half credit elective. And then we have an introductory computer science class as well that freshmen um, are eligible to take if they have um, Algebra 1 or Algebra in eighth grade under their belt, um, or after your freshman year, once you have Algebra 1, you consider taking this um, any other year after that. But it uses algebraic thinking. Um, and you might be doing things like uh, writing code to program a robot or to build an app or a game or to do some physical computing and do a lot of problem solving. So those are some options for some additional science courses you might consider your freshman year. Looking ahead to, um, to the, uh, your succeeding years and keeping an eye to the future here at CHS. So you need three and a half credits to graduate from CHS and three and a half credits in science to graduate. So you would be earning one of those your freshman year taking for system science. You will need one biology credit, um, one physical science credit, either in chemistry or physics, and one half credit from any other elective or any other course that, um, that we offer in our science department. Now, typically in the last uh, six years, 82% of our students who graduate from CHS have graduated with more than the, than the minimum requirement. So um, it's been as high, I think I've counted on transcripts as, as high as 10 and a half credits of science, um, which is pretty amazing. So we have a, several different biology courses you could consider in the future two chemistry courses, two physics courses, a lot of different electives like forensics and anatomy and physiology and engineering lab. And we also offer four advanced placement um, courses that can earn you college credit here at CH, uh, earn you college credit if you take those um, courses at CHS and do well enough on the AP exam. Um, so that's a little bit kind of looking ahead to the future, a uh, little bit of, um, ideas of what you might be thinking of taking in your greenhouse or blue house experience here at CHS. And I'm gonna pass it over to Mr. Canizero, who is going to give a little bit of background about art, music, and world language. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, as she said, I'm Vito Canizero. I'm team leader for world language, art, and music, uh, but I'm an art teacher. So I'm gonna start with the art department. Uh, there's two art teachers here at the high school, uh, me and Amanda Vela. Uh, Miss Vela joined us this year, and you eighth graders right, me, might remember her from first or second grade when you were at Union or Porter's. Uh, but she transferred here this year, and we're really happy to have her. She's a great addition to our, uh, our department. Um, so for fine arts at the high school, uh, you're required to take one credit. Um, in the art department, our classes are all half-credit classes or one semester, except for our 
highest level class, which you would take junior or senior year, which is our AP art class, which is a one credit class. As a freshman, you would take art one. Everybody takes art one, which is a foundation half credit, uh, one semester class. And we do a little bit of everything in there, learning about how to write about, how to talk about art, um, how to look at art, how to make art. We do a little bit of drawing, we do some painting, we do some printmaking and some sculpture. We try to cover a lot of different media so that you can then choose what class to take next. And after you take art one, even as a freshman, you could get into our drawing class. We have a great painting class. I teach pottery and we also have a sculpture class called 3D art. Um, as a sophomore, you would be able to take photography, uh, which is a great class. It's, um, we do digital and black and white. And then there's another level of pottery too. And then of course our AP art class. Uh, so next I wanna talk about the music department. We have two great teachers, Melissa Toll and Evan Peltier. Um, Ms. Toll is our vocal program teacher and Ms. Peltier is, Mr. Peltier is our band program. Um, let's see, we offer a variety of ensembles in both uh, programs. In the band program, we have concert band is where freshmen would start. Um, and it's a, you know, there are often different um, classmen in those classes as well, but that's where freshmen start. And then um, we also have a, a little bit upper level class that you can audition for once you're a sophomore, which is the Wind Ensemble. Um, we have Jazz Band, which is actually an after school class. We have a number of students that are in two uh, band programs and they do the Jazz Band, which is um, done after school. Um, and then we have our, let me talk a little bit about our vocal program. We have chorus is where our freshmen would go. And all of our um, band and vocal programs are one credit classes. So they're the full year. So you can get your fine art credit just by taking one of these programs for one year. Um, we have upper level concert choir for sophomores and above. We also have a couple of um, groups where you can audition. We have a group called Chorale. We have a group called Chamber Singers. Those are audition um, programs. And then in addition to those, we have some other great music classes. We teach, and these are non-performing. Um, so we teach beginning piano, as in non-performing in front of everybody coming to a concert. Um, but we teach beginning piano, and then also intermediate piano. We have a beginning guitar class. We have a music technology class, which teaches about making your own music on the computer. It's a really exciting class. And then we have a class that's running this year for the first time, Introduction to Music Theory, which is um, a really great addition. And that's our music program. And now I'll talk about our world language program. We have great, we have five great professors, and I can't say them in those languages, so I'll just say professors. <laughs> um, we have Carrie Robinson, Karen Turner, and Emma Pedrin are our Spanish teachers. And then we have Jennifer Loiseau and Yara Hanna are our French teachers. Miss Hanna also does our Arabic class, which I'll tell you about in a minute. So at the high school, we recommend that you take two to five years of the same language, okay? And it really depends on what your post-graduate um, plans are. If you're planning on going to a, you know, Ivy League college, you wanna get as much language of the same year as you can. Um, if you're just going to be general, undecided, do a business degree, you should take two or three years of the same language. That's really gonna put you in a good place uh, further down your career. Uh, so what we offer, we offer French 1 through French 5. Some of uh, you 8th graders are going to come in taking French 2 if you've had successful uh, time taking your um, French credits in the middle school. Uh, same with Spanish. Um, you'll be either in Spanish 1 or Spanish 2. Um, and then we offer, offer all levels through Spanish 5. And then we, offer, uh, we have two other classes that um, are half credit classes. 
elective classes. One of them is called Viva, and, it, and it's, called, it, it's exploring Spanish cultures, Spanish-speaking cultures in the world. So there's speaking, and there's a lot of art stuff that happens, a lot of cultural references. It's just a really great way to um, get introduced to a language, especially if you haven't done it before. And then, of course, um, the only school in the state that teaches this class, Intro to Arabic, uh, done by Miss Hanna. Uh, she is such, such a great teacher. It's a really difficult language to learn. She makes it so much fun. You learn so much about the culture, how to speak it, how to write it. It's such a beautiful language in so many different ways. So we hope you take as many language classes. Also, I want to put a plug in on the art club guy. So you should join art club, join clubs, get, in, get involved as many things as you can. We offer so much. Uh, thanks again, everybody for coming tonight. Oh, and now I'd like to introduce to you Miss LaCare, who will introduce our PE and health programs. Thanks, Vito. Okay, um, to start with, the physical education department mission is to promote participation in a healthy and active lifestyle through the teaching of a variety of activities such as mountain biking, kayaking, paddling, and rock climbing. The goal is for each student to identify a physical activity in which they can enjoy throughout their lifetime through skill development, knowledge, being active, and being social. The philosophy is first and foremost to develop their learning habits and the learning process, not based on athletic ability. We're looking to see that students can self-regulate, can be organized, persist, and are committed to trying activities and are willing to collaborate with others. Over the course of the three required semesters in phys ed, um, students will take physical and active risks both indoors and outdoors. We take advantage of the indoors and outdoor elements, and we're fortunate to have those at our fingertips. Students spend a lot of time on the water, in the fields, in the woods, and skiing in the snow. Please sign up for PE and step out of your comfort zone and just get excited about moving. So we have three um, teachers who are Tom Perry, Morgan Samler, and Courtney, um, who are part of the physical education department, and I teach health. So in the health department, um, the health department's mission is to help students explore health information while thinking about making responsible choices concerning their physical, mental, social, and emotional well-being of themselves and others. Both human ecology and Life 101 stress personal responsibility, personal choices, and methods to obtain accurate health information through knowledge, decision-making, and goal-setting. During PE, students cover alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs, they work on health skills. They work on personal health, mental health, and nutrition. If students aren't able to take health or human ecology during their freshman or sophomore year, they can take Life 101 their junior or senior year, which will meet the health requirements. Life 101 can also be, as said before, an elective for somebody who's already taken human ecology. In addition to that, I teach foods classes, and foods classes occur in both the fall and the spring. Those are electives that you can take freshman through senior year. These classes cover topics around food systems, exploring food. We grow vegetables when we can outside and inside through the hydroponic garden. We cook, we eat food. And finally, we have a combined class of PE and health class. Um, it's a fitness wellness class um, called Eat, Play, Live that you can take sophomore through your senior year. So sign up for health and be ready to practice some of those health skills and behaviors to help you be healthy throughout your life. And I'd like to um, lead this to give this to Bob Hall and Amber Keep. Thank you, Melanie. So hello, everyone. Nice to see so many people in attendance. It's great to have you virtually, even though we can't see you in person. Wanted to talk a little bit around the support systems that we have here at Colchester High School. We offer a variety of different systems, everything from guidance to our AT, which is an advisory time that students get to meet with an advisory teacher that they're scheduled with for all four years of their high school career. And that gives them an opportunity to meet with additional teachers, again, on some acceleration activities to make up work if they're missing work. 
They, we also have, like Ms. Sharkey mentioned before, the math lab is an option for students to get some extra support in math, a writer's workshop for some humanities supports. There's also um, a variety of different access points for students either before school or after school, accessing teachers from their websites as well. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on is the last bullet down there is the multi-tier systems of supports. Some of our students coming in from the middle school might have an educational support plan or an EST plan. We also provide supports for students that are um, on a special education IEP plan or a 504 plan. And then we offer a fantastic ELL program here at the high school as well for some extra supports. I'm going to let Bob talk a little more around guidance. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Bob Hall. I'm the team leader for guidance and this is my 17th year here at CHS. It's, it's flown by, it's been so great. Uh, it hardly seems like it's been that long. Uh, in our department, we support students in three broad domains, academic, career, personal, social. So you've heard from the different team leaders about different academic offerings. You know, in grade nine, do I double up in science? Do I not? Um, part of, that's part of what we do in guidance and helping students map out their, their course plan for the, all four years and then beyond. Um, of course, also planning for life after high school, uh, whether it's career or college or both. And then, um, the personal social areas, uh, and obviously no surprise that a lot of students are, are struggling this year, uh, not being able to be in school every day and dealing with the stresses of learning from home. And we do a lot of support uh, in that realm as well. And so that's the broad areas that we work. And then I wanna to touch a little bit more on the flexible pathways that uh, Ms. Behrens uh, talked about in the beginning. She's gonna pop that slide up for us. So. Flexible pathways, really what we're talking about is a variety of different ways for students to earn a high school diploma. Um, there is no doubt that you can jump on the conveyor belt and ride it all the way to graduation and just take the classes we tell you to take and have a positive experience and it's great. Um, we believe that students will have a better experience if they are driving their own bus and picking and choosing along the way and doing things that are best suited to them. And maybe that is riding the conveyor belt, but maybe it's doing something different like going to one of the technical centers. Uh, Burlington Tech is a half-day program, Essex Tech is a full-day program, um, or uh, doing something different here at CHS. Uh, we have opportunities, you know, the thing about school is like we control, you know, we control the audio, we control the video, like we control the content of the courses, but we have expanded that for students in allowing them to uh, create the course content for themselves. Those two things you see in the middle there, extended learning and Laker Learning Lab. So instead of us providing uh, content to you, it's students getting to say, you know, I'd rather dig in on this. And can I just auger down on this particular subject and, and, uh, and do my own class? And that's what those two classes are about. Um, uh, extended learning is sort of developing those in independent inquiry skills. And then students who have developed those independent inquiry skills move on to Laker Learning Lab and come up with their own independent projects. Like we had a student who wanted to get her Google Analytics certification before she graduated. So that was her Laker Learning Lab project. And we don't teach American Sign Language here at CHS, but we had five students last year do Laker Learning Lab to teach themselves uh, American Sign Language. So there's a lot of options there. VHS is virtual high school. There's a, like a couple of hundred classes that are outside of our curriculum that students can take through virtual high school. Uh, you've heard about the TIPS uh, class, which is a great class for students. To, it's an internship class uh, where they can get out and see if they really uh, like what they're thinking they want to do. And believe me, uh, we have had students who have said, yeah, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. And then they find out they do that internship like, you know, that wasn't what I thought it was going to be, you know, or for some students, they do it and they're like, yeah, that was awesome. And it's definitely what I want to do. So it really is a helpful class. Um, Dual enrollment, early college, uh, you heard earlier, uh, we have two classes this year that are uh, dual, or what we call concurrent enrollment. You take the class here at CHS, but you can also earn college credit. Next year, that'll be three classes. Um, so, and we are continuing to expand uh, the number of classes that are concurrently enrolled. So students will be able to take advantage of um, the dual enrollment voucher system the state has so that you can get college credit while you're here at CHS. And then early colleges, of course, is an opportunity for students to um, 
leave CHS for their senior year and start their college education uh, in their senior year. Uh, there's, a, again, just more stuff, work-based learning options where it's volunteering, mentoring. There's a lot of ways that students can earn credit. If you're, um, we want you to, to sort of design your own uh, education here at CHS. I mean, definitely we have graduation requirements, but there's a lot of ways to make that happen. So that's what Flexible Pathways are all about, and we're definitely supportive of you following your pathway. Uh, the next slide up, so here's the team. Uh, again, I'm the team leader. Uh, these are my colleagues, Julie Pastore and Katie Moran and Patty Ward is our registrar of the smiling face that your students will see when they walk in the guidance uh, office. Uh, we divide our caseloads up by alphabet. And so, um, you know, I typically have the front of the alphabet and Ms. Pastore has the middle and then uh, Ms. Moran has the end of the alphabet and it differs a little bit each year, um, but that's how we uh, divide up our caseloads. And just, you can see there on our website, we have a very comprehensive website and uh, it covers all of the stuff that we do. We have a pretty robust curriculum that we deliver through that AT program that Ms. Keep mentioned. Um, this year, uh, it happens to be all through webinars like this one. So students log in on Wednesday afternoons to get our curriculum. And, uh, and it, but it's for grades nine through 12. So we, we cover each grade level uh, with everything that we do. And then we post everything we do on the website. Even before this year where it was webinar based, we still post everything we do on the website so students can access that content at any time. That's it for me. So um, I'm gonna hop in here. I'm Jean Shea. Heather um, introduced me in the beginning. I'm one of the four administrators. I'm the director um, of support services. And um, I actually have worked here over 20 years, uh, maybe 22, I don't know, the years sort of start to merge all together. Um, it has been a wonderful, wonderful time here. And um, I'm so excited, like everyone has said, to see so many um, participants here below. Um, so one of the things I just wanted to um, quickly highlight for you that we're pretty proud of is um, our outside relationship with Centerpoint Family Services. Um, Centerpoint um, is an agency that we work with that um, we have these two um, counselors that we have this relationship with. One provides family and parent support and the other provides individual student support. This year being, um, you know, living in this hybrid world, um, they have really been an incredible resource for families and for students. Um, one of the things that Danielle Jatlow, the um, counselor that provides family support, often says is I love to talk with families about the joys and challenges of parenting adolescents. Um, I'm imagining some of you smiling and shaking your head yes, right? So one of the things that she um, has talked a lot about this year is just having those conversations around how the challenges that we're all living in and, um, and also then finding those small successes and really working to celebrate those. Um, Amy Jensen um, is, again, she is also with Centerpoint and she works individually with students. Um, in the past, I would say pre-COVID, a lot of that work was on short-term skill building stress management, those types of things. And although she has continued to do that, again, what we have seen is sort of an increase in her services around how do I manage, how do I manage COVID and how do I continue um, you know, to thrive in the school setting. Um, they do most of their support virtually um, and are really flexible and um, you know, sometimes have also done groups with folks. And I think one of the things that can be really helpful sometimes as a parent and then also for you students who are on here is sometimes just learning you're not the only one that is sometimes again experiencing the joys and challenges of being a teenager or raising teenagers. Um, so just wanted to highlight, highlight that for you. Both of their phone numbers are there. Um, so just a really great resource. Before we move it to the Q&A portion, and thank you for sticking with us, um, I just want to say two more things. One, um, we know how important communication is, and we also know how hard it is sometimes to get information out of your high schooler. Um, I speak from experience as a parent of a high schooler. And so um, a couple things. One, um, please 
um, reach out to faculty and staff when you have questions. We are here, um, teachers, admin, staff. Um, so definitely don't be shy about reaching out. Power School is a great way. Um, we encourage you um, as parents to get on Power School and be using it regularly um, with your students um, to see their progress in classes. Our website, um, we keep the website updated, have lots of information on there. Um, so we encourage you to use our website. We send out, um, now it's a monthly Lake Review. Um, it changed while school was closed and it was weekly. I was sending out the Lake Review and videos, um, but we've moved back to monthly. So you received um, our first Lake Review as part of the transition. You will continue to receive those Lake Reviews. Um, and then we're also on social media. So Facebook, Facebook Twitter, um, we try to update those also. So um, those are just some of the ways that we communicate, but communication is important to us. Um, so please um, seek us out. The last thing is I have two pieces of advice for our um, upcoming ninth graders. So again, as a parent of a high schooler, as well as the principal of the school, I take a lot of liberty in giving a lot of advice. Um, but I only have two pieces and um, they're pretty important though. First is, you've heard us say it multiple times, get involved, find out what CHS has to offer, take advantage of it, find your niche here. Um, and the second thing is we're a family here. Um, we love being here. Teachers, staff, kids, in general, we're just really happy when we're together and we're here. Um, and so don't be afraid to um, ask for help if you need it. Um, we're a strong community and we're excited to have you be part of So we have, again, you have stuck with us for a really long time. Um, I'm going to pass this to Chad Demagistris, who is going to facilitate our um, question and answer, a few minutes of question and answer if we have some. Awesome, thank you, Ms. Barron. Again, I'm Chad Demagistris, one of the two assistant principals. Um, I know many of you, time is precious, so if you need to hop off, our formal presentation uh, has concluded um, as a reminder this presentation is being recorded and we will share it with families via email. So if you need to leave, that's fine, but we're gonna stick around and answer some questions using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen um, to answer any programming or general questions that you have about the school. Um, you've met with the entire admin team tonight and all of our team leaders. So if you have any specific questions that pertain to your student, um, please, as Heather just mentioned, reach out to us and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, I already have a few questions in my queue and I'm gonna start off uh, with our guidance team. And this first question is for students coming from outside Colchester like Georgia or the islands, are there programs to help them meet other kids? That's a great question. And so the, the recommendation that I have always made to students who come from outside of Colchester is to get involved and join something, you know, whether it's a club or a sport. Again, most of our students do that. Um, and, and with a great example I have is a, I had a student, I was like, you know, do anything, join any club, whatever, like join a fall sport because we start, fall sports typically start two weeks before the school year starts. So you've got two weeks meeting a group of, uh, of students uh, before you even walk in the building for the first time for school. And so you know that group. And so, and, and upon graduation, she said, you know, it probably was the smartest thing I did. I played field hockey my first year. I ended up sticking with field hockey for four years, you know, but I did it that first year and I met a whole group of students and it really made the transition a lot easier. So the number one thing you can do is to join something and not that sports are the be all end all, but that advantage of two weeks of, of being with students before the school year starts in the fall is huge. So, you know, pick a, pick a fall activity, run cross country or something. It's a, they're all great kids and it's a good opportunity to get involved. Mr. Hall, I'm going to ask you to keep your mic on because this next question is for you as well. Do students have a chance to meet with their guidance counselors before registering for classes? That is an outstanding question and the answer is usually yes. Um, usually we go to the middle school uh, and I go to the islands and I go to Georgia and I meet with or we as guidance meet with our eighth grade students um, because of the restrictions we are not able to go into the other buildings to meet with students um, the guidance department at the middle school is doing that work uh, themselves this year, but that doesn't mean that we're not available to you. So by all means, shoot us an email, 
uh, give us a phone call and we can definitely discuss uh, picking classes and what that looks like for you before you come in next year. We're, we're still here. Um, so by all means, reach out. Uh, this next question I'm going to um, send to Mr. Cole and the humanities team. Uh, for human humanities, how will the two teachers work? Will there be information for two sources at the same time? Uh, I, I'm not sure I understand the question exactly, but I can say that um, it works much more smoothly than you might think. Um, so when teachers are co-teaching, um, they are in the room together at the same time, uh, and they are sharing the instructional space. Um, they have already done a tremendous amount of planning ahead of time to figure out who's doing what, who's saying what. Uh, there's not like a, um, there won't be a redundancy of information provided, uh, if that's the question. Um, they will be um, sharing the same agenda for the week. Those agendas are posted weekly uh, on, the, on the course website. Um, they'll design that together and, and they are really operating as a single instructor together so that there's uh, double the knowledge, if that makes sense. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Canizaro, is Art 1 only one semester? After that semester, are students able to take more advanced art? Yes, Art 1 is just a one semester class and after Art 1, as a ninth grader, there are four other options, drawing, painting, pottery, and 3D art. Thank you. Mr. Hall, when and how um, will students pick the courses they would like to take in ninth grade? A great question. So that actually, at, at, at Colchester Middle School, that process starts on February 1st. And so they are doing it um, in their Core class, uh, core content areas, uh, they've got a schedule set up that they just shared with us actually um, moments before uh, we logged on to this webinar. And so um, from the first through, I believe it's the 12th or something like that, students will be registering uh, for their classes at CMS. Now, for those of you who are not uh, in the Colchester schools, or if you are in Colchester, whether it's Georgia, the islands, or if you're in one of the Catholic schools, um, that process is a one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation with me or one of the other guidance counselors. So if you are, um, if you are outside of the Colchester system, um, please reach out to me and we can schedule a time to have that conversation and pick classes. Again, normally I love getting into the other buildings and, and going up to Georgia and going to the islands and meeting with students uh, in their home buildings, but we just can't do that this year. So we're gonna have to do it via Zoom, but uh, please reach out and we'll make those things happen for sure. So we have time for one more question. Uh, looks like an athletic question that I'll answer. Do you have a volleyball team for girls? We do have a volleyball club here at Colchester High School that is a fall sport. Um, normally it's indoors. This year it was outside um, due to the uh, COVID pandemic. So yes, we do have that opportunity for kids who are interested in uh, playing volleyball. At this time, I'm gonna turn it back over to Ms. Barron to, for closing remarks. So thank you everyone who joined us and stuck with us. I know we didn't get to all the questions, um, but we will keep track of them and um, try to answer them in a Q&A doc that we will also link this presentation and the recording of the webinar. So be on the lookout um, in the next week or two for that email. Um, thank you for joining us and have a wonderful evening and reach out to us if you have any additional questions.